are live. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Pure Dog Talks Live at 5. I am your host, Laura Reeves. As you can tell, I have crud. So I am going to do my very best to hang with y'all tonight. <laughs> but if I go off in a coughing jag, don't worry, I'm not going to die. I'm really excited everybody is joining us. We are answering some questions and busting some myths about pet insurance tonight. So this is a big topic. I see a lot of conversations come up on dog, bo dog book on this. So tonight we have trained insurance professionals to answer your questions versus, you know, keyboard warriors. So... While well, everybody is hopping on, a couple items for the good of the order. In case you guys haven't heard, recently we launched a very cool opportunity to access the archives. You know, we've got 600 and some odd episodes. So I've done all the searching and the hunting and the pecking for you. And for the low, low introductory price of only a buck ninety nine. You can download entire albums on topics like breeding and whelping hands-on, the interviews like with Legends, Veterinary Voice with Dr. Marty Greer, all about owner handlers, so, so much more. So this is a really super cool thing that I've done for you guys. As always, our success is your success. If you haven't yet, please do check out our exclusive patrons group. Your added perk is the Pure Pep Talk, a weekly text message sponsored by Trupanion that has an upbeat, fun, educational little tidbit. Uh, you can sign up for the patrons group and the Pep Talk messages for as little as $10 a month. I mean... You know, that's the price of a couple drinks at your favorite coffee stand. And that's for a month. That gets you a lot more for a lot less than any place else you can go. Of course, as you know, more support gets you more access. So there's that. Bottom line, you guys, your passion is our purpose. You can check it all out on the website at puredogtalk.com. Now, let's get our little party started tonight. Have some super great people to join us. We have Jordan Thompson. And I'm going to just lose my spot. Lacey O'Connell are joining us to talk about insurance and pet insurance specifically. What is it? What is it not? What is, for example, a pre-existing condition? What does that actually mean? What are waiting periods? What is, for God's sake, birthday pricing? Ah. So we got the inside scoop for you. I know everybody is always looking for more information on this. So welcome, you guys. I'm super excited that you can join us. And we also have Rex the dog. So <laughs> just in case anybody was wondering if this was truly a dog podcast, Rex the wire hair pointer is here to join us. So that's the best part. So welcome you guys. How are you doing tonight? Doing great. Doing great. No complaints. Rex is stoked to be here. Excellent. Rex, I'm, I'm counting on you, man. You're right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jordan and Lacey. Um, let's you know to some real basic stuff, right? Like pet insurance for many of us who have dogs, who have purebred dogs, um, who've been at this a long time, Pet insurance is a relatively novel concept, right? Like you guys work at this for a lot of us. It's like, what, what, what the what? So what is pet insurance? I'm going to have Jordan do what is pet insurance. And I'm going to have Lacey do what is not pet insurance. <laughs> what is pet insurance not for? So Jordan, you start. What is pet insurance? Sweet. Great, great, great one to start on. Uh, I was definitely one of those before I got into this industry that knew absolutely nothing. Um, and even today, it changes constantly. So uh, pet insurance, it's really, you know, medical insurance for your cat or dog. 
Um, most of the time we're talking coverage for any accident, illness, um, that unexpected stuff that might come up, a lot like having car insurance. Uh, if I just gave a quick short example, my puppy here, Rex, poked his eyeball with a stick. I didn't plan for that. Luckily I had insurance and that's where it kicks in is for that unexpected accident or illness. And I think that's a really great example, Jordan, that we can use. Your car insurance doesn't pay for your oil change. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately not. But I'm saying your pet insurance doesn't pay for your vaccinations, right? So right. Lacey, talk us through what pet insurance is not with that little, <laughs> I gave you a little stuff tool there. <laughs> That's the perfect start. So the one of the main things you're not going to find coverage for is um, wellness. So when we're looking at vaccines, um, and it is for good reason, definitely, you know, do your research on it. Um, but basically, vaccines are going to cost you so much. Insurance isn't going to change that. It's something that you have to do. So it has to be built into the cost if it were included in insurance coverage. So it's that's something to, you're not going to find insurance for. But the good thing is it's something you can plan for. You have an idea of how much vaccinations are going to cost you annually. Um, or your breeder can give you a good idea of, you know, what you'd be paying for that. Um, the other thing you'll see with pet insurance in general, too, um, there's no coverage available for pre-existing conditions. Um, it's I, I use a so lot of the... Run with um, that. What is a pre-existing condition? Explain that. Yes. Like, I know what it is for me. What is it for my dog? Is it the same? Is it similar. So pre-existing condition is anything that was present prior to coverage starting. Um, and this is going to be same with all pet insurance as we can't cover anything that has started prior to the coverage starting. That also means if you were ever to switch in between insurance companies. So we want to make sure that people understand if they were ever to cancel with us or with another company that if you have something covered, it's not going to transfer over to another company or another insurance policy. So pre-existing is anything that starts prior to that coverage taking place um so you can think of you know it's a <laughs> i would have pre-existing conditions i broke my finger <laughs> years ago and now i have arthritis all of those things are associated with an injury that i had a long time ago but that's also not what i would be getting insurance for i know that my finger is going to have arthritis <laughs> we'll figure out another way to deal with that i know it's there insurance isn't going to cover something that you're already you already know is present Okay. And so I think for me, this is actually a really good segue. Um, and I will mention for everybody who's listening, our insurance experts join us from Trupanion. Trupanion is a big supporter of the podcast. We want to make sure that Trupanion gets a, a plug here. So that's very important, but they are insurance experts. And so we're not here necessarily to sell Trupanion, but to sell the concept and explain the basic idea of what insurance is. Jordan, talk to us about, and this is something that I have learned, why spinning off of Lacey's conversation about pre-existing condition, insuring your puppy with a go-home offer, for example, from a litter of puppies is so um, valuable. Yeah, great, great way to go. Um, so many different reasons, to be honest, but the, the, the big ones are... When, when you enroll as a puppy, you're really going to avoid a lot of those pre-existing conditions, right? I mean, almost every time we're talking happy, healthy puppies that are just bouncing around having a good time, no signs or symptoms that are going on before they go to their new homes. So if a buyer of a puppy activates that coverage around go-home day, they have a clean bill of health and what we call a green paw print uh, here at Trupanion, they're going to be eligible for a lot more coverage versus somebody that's activating for a dog that's eight or nine years old and has been through, you know, a lot of conditions and things over the years. So when you activate as a puppy, that's definitely the best way to start on the right paw. I, I think it's really interesting too. And Lacey, maybe you can kind of take this and run with it that I had never really thought about. And people say, well, you know, pet insurance is so expensive and whatever. I'm like, dog only lives 12 years, right? So we're talking about amortization. So talk to us a little bit about that concept that you're amortizing X amount of expense over a comparatively short amount of time. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I can even use my own dog as an example. He's about nine years old now. Um, and it's he one of his big things that insurance will always be worth it is he was diagnosed with a low grade heart murmur when he was five years old. It's something that will continue to get checked out. And fortunately, knock on wood, fortunately has not progressed into anything more, but the coverage will continue to apply to any treatment for that. So if it is a condition that develops into something more or, you know, something more serious right now, we're just doing uh, the annual echocardiogram. Check it out. Make sure everything is is good to go. Um the lifespan of a dog it's <laughs> my guy he's nine years old and it's hopefully he'll outlive me but you know i'm planning on him living another <laughs> 10 years if i can get him there um but that's also where it's nice to have that additional support so he has this ongoing condition that he's had for a few years now uh but he also has a he also has a claim history of eating something he's not supposed to <laughs> he also recently had one of his front teeth removed because he got too excited with the bully stick which is supposed to be easier for them but it's he chipped a front tooth and so we joke about he has a, a hockey injury now but there's yeah. these little things that add up you know over nine years though three different conditions nothing too mm -hmm. drastic um and that's again though the the heart murmur is the one reason where it's like you know it's i'll never get rid of his coverage for the sake of that yeah right continues 100%. to recover and could turn into something pretty expensive down the line Absolutely. So talk to us, Jordan, talk to us a little bit. What are you going to look for? What are our listeners going to go? And they're comparing insurance plans. They're looking at Trupanion and Fetch and blah, 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 all the different ones, right? What are the, yeah. and, and, and I mean, this is a burgeoning industry. This is why we're doing this little TED talk, right? To talk about, okay, so what do we look for in that insurance plan? I know when I compare Aetna to Pacific source to whatever, right? Like, let's compare. What are we going to look for in our pets insurance? Absolutely. And Lacey, feel free to jump in because I feel like we could talk about this for the next hour. This is a big, uh, this is a deep this is a big one. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the first thing everyone notices is price, right? Anytime you're looking at anything, it's price, price, price. You really got to look at the details when it's coming to insurance because if you fall for just, oh, this is the cheapest, you're going to miss out on a lot of things. So I always look for what's covered. Not just what's covered, but what's not covered is the big question. Are there exclusions simply because I have a golden retriever who's likely to, you know, develop uh, cancer as they get older? Are they going to exclude coverage on that kind of thing? Um, I also look at how the deductible works. I also look right. at, um, you know, uh, payout limits is a big one. Are they in it for the long haul with me? Um, so you can really dive into all the details, not just that top advertisement statement they have. Um, so really pick things apart. And I think it's really interesting. And Lacey, maybe you can do a little deeper dive on this one, the one that, that Jordan just mentioned, which I had no idea because, of course, I've only ever worked with Trupanion. I had no idea that that there are insurance companies that exclude certain breeds and certain conditions within those breeds. Like, talk to us about how that works and how to ask or check for that in the insurance program that you're talking with. Yeah, when it's, it, you know, one of the, the nice things are, it, I, <laughs> I like it. I like to have all the information, you know, especially when making a purchase. One of the things that I appreciated about Trupanion when I started there is you have a copy of the policy. As soon as my dog was enrolled, I got a copy of the policy. And it's, I know that sounds super dry and boring, <laughs> but it was surprisingly easy to read. You know, there isn't a lot of fine print in there. In general, though, you know, it's you should be able to get an idea of, you know, what's going to be covered for my pet, what wouldn't be covered. Um, definitely look into breed exclusions. That's something, unfortunately, I have seen from other companies. Um, and it's, it to be honest, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But it's, you know, we all love our pets regardless. But there are, you will occasionally find companies with breed exclusions or exclusions specific to, uh, I always use the example of the flat face breeds. If flat face mm -hmm. breeds, you know, they're not going to cover something associated with respiratory. Um, another thing that I would say to, to keep an eye out for, though, too, um, is if there's a cap on the coverage. Um, as I mentioned, yeah. I like to have all the information I can possibly have. One of the good things in general that I kind of enjoy about working in pet insurance is it's 
pretty black and white. And like I said, you can read through a Trupanion policy if you want. You can read through most pet insurance companies' policies. Um, you know, it's it's straightforward. This is covered or this is not covered. There's a limit on this. There's not a limit on that. I, it's easier for me to understand my dog's coverage than, to be honest, my own personal coverage. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, just, I just, I close I my that. eyes and like poke a button when it comes to like, you know. And, and we don't like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, we don't have AHA for dogs yet, so I don't know what to do about that, but there you go. Um, um, the other thing, of course, that I find really valuable, and I think many of our listeners are going to find valuable, is coverage um, on a breeding rider or is any kind of breeding coverage included? And talk to us, Jordan, maybe you can speak to this. How common or uncommon is that? And I mean, is that something you're going to find? How hard do you have to look for that? Where is it covered? How is it covered? That kind of thing. I wouldn't say it's too common, honestly. It's something you definitely got to look for. Um, you can definitely pick apart a policy to see if anything would be covered in that way. Um, once again, with Trupanion, we have what's called a breeding rider that can be added on to any policy, and that covers any accident or illness related during the breeding process. So the number one claim we see through that is unexpected C-sections or emergency right. C-sections, um, which is a great coverage add-on. We chat with a lot of our breeder partners about this um, because, you know, depending on your breed, this can come up unexpectedly and it's having that coverage. <laughs> yeah, exactly, is uh, really key for such an expensive um, uh, bill. But uh, yeah, it's definitely something you, you got to pick apart. It's not just going to be automatically on any coverage, even if you mention you're a breeder. You got to ask those questions. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I, having just been through an emergency C-section, unexpected for nine puppies. Yeah, it's a good thing to have. Um, okay, so we were talking about some of the exclusions. Hereditary and congenital. Talk about that. I mean, it's not even necessarily just breed-based. Am I understanding that correctly? That there are certain conditions that some... Um, companies will exclude no matter what? Yes. Yeah, there are um, uh, things like CCL tears or luxating patella. Um, you will uh, definitely ask, you know, whoever, wherever you're researching, definitely look into those specific types of exclusions. The other thing that you will sometimes run into um, is companies will have different waiting periods for something like that it's i won't i won't name names but i know there's some companies that will have you know a, a 18 month waiting period um for something that can happen to a young dog it just it, it happens it's not not planned you didn't know that it was going to you know have a knee issue when it's a one-year-old lab running around right. in mud back for that, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um and so i guess also talk to us about um you just mentioned waiting periods and it kind of tripped my trigger. Jordan, maybe you can touch on what is, is there a waiting period? Like I, I am old enough to remember back in the day when people insurance had a waiting period. Like I got hired by a company and I couldn't, you know, get insurance for, or be covering for 60 days. What is that? How does that work in pet insurance? Yeah, yeah. Uh, most insurance companies that I know of, uh, pretty much all, uh, have a waiting period just when you start a policy. So, for example, at Trupanion, you have a five-day waiting period for accidents, 30-day waiting period for illnesses. That means you have to get through that period before coverage will start, um, before you kind of are in the clear for your policy to truly begin. Um, unless, unless you sign up with your puppy <laughs> go-home policy. Exactly. Unless you're partnered with one of our breeder partners, um, for example, Rex here, who I got from a very well-known German wire hair breeder, uh, I was able to activate an offer by my breeder, Laura, and that kickstarted coverage on that day. It waived all waiting periods, so he was covered right off the bat, which is really nice, especially for puppies going to their new homes. You never know what's going to happen in the first 30 days. Um, Jump out the car window. I know it's happened. <laughs> poking your eyeball with a stick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> happened like 25 days in. Didn't plan for it. Um, but yeah, well, waiting periods, you, plan for it. <laughs> you gotta watch out because no, nothing's worse than you think you have this coverage and you, you don't get the details of the waiting periods and something happens within then. It's also going to be considered pre-existing and therefore not covered once you're out of the waiting periods. 
So it's 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 key to either look for that go home day offer or just know what your waiting periods are when you're starting any policy with any insurance company. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. That actually I'm not even sure I knew that. Um pricing. We talked a little bit about pricing. Um what are some of the how do you, how do you decide how much it costs? Right? And I know it everybody's got different prices and there's a price point for each company and that's but what are some of the things that people Ta- you know, take into consideration when they're setting a price. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely looking at the different types of coverage. Um, I mentioned earlier uh, caps, if there's caps on coverage. And that's one thing you'll see is a little bit different uh, between companies. Uh, Trupanion does not have a cap on their coverage in any way. It's uncapped. Um, But that also keeps us from always being the cheapest option out there. Um, As I mentioned, you know, uh, pet insurance, I like that it's it's pretty black and white. That might be easier for me to say it's I'm I'm an insurance agent. That's (laughs) <laughs> it's, I know how to read it and, and understand you like a little to better read than those than things, everyone. Lacey. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, like, pet insurance kind of policies are fun. Right there. L- Lacey hey, reads you- policies on her days off, on her weekend <laughs> evening, evening reads. <laughs> Hey, you, you will like reading pet insurance policies when you try to compare it to like my homeowner's policy. I have no idea what any of that stuff means. And yeah. then I go try to claim something and it's like, no, they told me my toilet wasn't outside, so it's not covered. <laughs> it's, pet insurance is fun. That's the point. <laughs> but no, oh when you're, God. when you're looking at, looking at the different pricing, um, you know, caps, that's one of the big things that I recommend look out mm-hmm. for. Um, there can also be different caps or what I've seen is caps on like the luxating patella. They may have a cap mm-hmm. on a physical injury. They may have a cap on okay, what's your um, annual limit on the coverage? Um, Trupanion doesn't have a cap um, but that's also something that's taken into how pricing is made. We want to make sure that we're able to pay for any bills uncapped when it comes up um, so it's, you will see a little bit of a difference in rates there. Um, you can also look into uh, what's called birthday pricing that some companies will do. Um, and that's, we're talk about that's, that. <laughs> yeah, that's where they have a plan of increasing your your rates as your pet gets older. So if we look at, you know, we have young, healthy pets, you know, nothing's going on with them. They are fine. They may not have a single issue for the first three or four years. But then by the time they're six years old, they're rates start going up a little bit you want to cancel their coverage because you're like why am i paying for this it costs too much and then a couple years later they're diagnosed with cancer so the reason that um and you know it's a a respect to why it's done the way it is insurance companies have to make sure that they can pay those bills so if you see a company that's starting off your young dog really really low just look into it a little bit deeper might be because they're planning on they're just going to charge you more when you need to use this eight years down the road um you know it's there's there's ways that it all balances out um so it's Mm -hmm. with insurance or with pet insurance i would say for the most part you get what you pay for so i would Mm -hmm. be cautious anything that's really really cheap um because i've had (laughs) i've had enough of my own vet bills in the past but just look at like the caps what does the coverage apply to what is it not going to cover um and well and off. i wanted to to do a quick conversation about the what is it not cover because i have heard i mean you know people talk to me all the time about crazy things and what happens if you have a pet insurance and you go in and you took rex and you were competing in a hunting event and you say hunting and i am told that people have been turned down for um, an accident claim because they were participating in an event. Can you speak to that, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, luckily I haven't had to deal with that personally, Um, but it's another one of those things you gotta look into what's excluded. Um, Lacey, remind me for True Painting, I believe it's, it's sled dogs. And there was one other one, but, um, that's the only exclusions when it comes to like working dogs kind of thing. Um, at Trepanion, we still cover it, but yeah, I, I've, I've heard of that. Um, luckily I don't deal with that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's why I wanted to kind of throw it out there is, is that something you guys encounter and, and where, again, where do you look for this stuff? Lacey, you're the one that reads all the, all the premiums. Where do I go <laughs> to find this? Right? Like page 98. I mean, where am I going here? It, 
this oh i'm afraid i'm afraid to say this but i think it's actually insurance law that they have to have exclusions <laughs> like there has to be a section um for exclusions okay. i know we have it in our policy because i've read it so many <laughs> times <laughs> no but you'll see it you'll see um there are list of you know exclusions um with trupanion jordan if this helps too i believe it's uh sled dogs you're correct there um but think of like i did a rod um it's not just like oh i yeah. want to see if my dog will pull my wagon <laughs> and now you got her. <laughs> the like sled yeah. dog like these these guys are a real they're, dog. Yeah. they're 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 tough um <laughs> and I, I believe the other one is racing dogs so it's like dogs on the racetrack um i believe uh but i can I can read the policy and get back to you guys <laughs> to confirm that. But Everybody they're very specific. Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's raced in sled dogs. But again, you'd have um, to read the policy to really dive into that. That's not a normal question that someone calls us with. Well, I know, about. but here we are on Pure Dog Talk where people do these things. So sure, that's exactly what we're talking right, about. Exactly right. exactly. Um, and so when, the other one I hear a lot of, and again, I'm on social all the time with the podcast, with my own stuff. I frequently, you know, somebody says, what's the best insurance? Of course, I say Trepanion. But my question is, the common refrain I hear is, I don't need patent insurance. I just have a credit card or I just have a savings account or I just have a thing. So talk to me about why your experience indicates that may not be sufficient. Well, and it's, you know, one of the downsides of working in the pet insurance industry is we've heard all the stories. We've seen all the things that can happen. Um, you know, sometimes it's even friends or family that are going through something. Um, it's mm -hmm. I have confidence when I go into the vet, no matter what is happening to my dog, I can just say, do whatever you need to and make sure that he's OK. Um, we do we do run into scenarios and don't get me wrong i'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have a high credit limit or maybe a ton in savings um but just having the ability to go in and just say do whatever you need to um you know there's some procedures uh you know they'll do a surgical procedure to just check if a dog is experiencing ivdd that can be a ten thousand dollar exploratory surgery that's not even fixing the problem they're just checking to see if this is if this is what we think it is, um, you know, so it's you can run into that pretty quickly. For me, it's part of getting a pet is getting ready for the cost. And this is just right. another one of those, you know, I'm going to pay for this just like I'm going to pay for gas in my car <laughs> and car insurance. But it's, you know, there's there's those little costs that are associated, you know, with the decision to get a pet. Um, and it's mm -hmm. insurance premiums, I think, is just one of those. So that you don't run into the, well, can I? afford another $10,000 surgery. Um, and the amount that has been paid out in claims too, which again is, you know, I, uh, it's great to see how much we have helped, but it's also scary uh, to see how yeah. the claims that yeah. can come up. I'm paranoid and I will never have a pet without insurance <laughs> after seeing <laughs> some of these just accidents <laughs> that come up and right. how big of a, a thing it can be. Um, you know, it's the, the cost can get up there into the six figures, um, you know, for for stuff you'd, you'd never expect expect to happen. You wouldn't even think of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. If I can piggyback that, I mean, I'm in the same realm as Lacey of uh, you, you just don't know what can happen. Life happens, right? Um, even if I have a savings account, which I did, uh, my transmission blew up my truck. So there went five grand that, you know, maybe if I didn't have pet insurance, I might have been trying to save up for my dog. But just like Lacey said, when I go to the vet now for any sort of problem, they're like, well, we could try that. I'm like, do it. I don't ask like two. Well, I ask the basic questions, right? Because I like to be a responsible pet owner. But I, I can get Rex the best possible care I can, and not have to stress about being able to put on a credit card and pay it off or take it out of my savings because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, being in the insurance industry, I'm now definitely a helicopter parent when it, <laughs> with dogs. But uh, it's just a big peace of mind thing to know that I can get them covered however I have to. Right. Oh yeah. Right, and and I think that. You know, the thing that I think is is sort of shocking to me as I, you know, I deal with, I work with you guys, I deal with my own dogs, I, whatever, the amazing advances in veterinary care that we've seen in the time that I've been involved in dogs. You know, it used to be you just, you know, if X, Y, or Z happened, you put the dog down. 
And that was what it was. That was just a fact of life. And, and that is almost never like the first option anymore because they have the veterinary care has come so far in terms of what they can actually do. And I think that that is part of where I see pet insurance playing, playing a role, right? Like, like you said, I, you know, I can do a $15,000 spinal surgery on my pet that has bone cancer in the spine or, you know, whatever it is, instead of just pulling the plug immediately. And I, I think that that's, that's a peace of mind that actually matters. And I think that's the part that I talk to people a lot. You know, I, we all want the best thing for our dogs or our cats. I'm sorry, there's cat people out there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that is, that's a pretty cool thing. So Jordan, talk to us a little bit about um, paying. The one thing that I really want to do true panion is cool because one of the, one of the things, but I'm saying this one is I think a particularly cool feature paying the vet directly. Talk a little bit about that for me. Uh, probably my favorite part of true panion. Um, so true panion <laughs> partnered it with. It doesn't come out of my uh, pocket. <laughs> yes, uh, we're partnered with vets all over the United States and Canada. Uh, but basically, if your vet's partnered with True Panion, let's say I take Rex in for just you know something that happened, I'll end up only paying my portion. True Panion is going to pay their portion directly to the vet hospital, so I do not have to pay the vet hospital everything and wait for a reimbursement check. I can pay them. True Panion pays them directly, and I can walk out the door. So in Rex's case, still I pay my, pay my deductible. <laughs> <laughs> or get a new transmission in your truck uh, but i only have to pay my deductible and 10 percent, and i can walk out the door which is the best thing versus have to you know plan for the money wait on the money for a check to come in the mail um, we still do that if a vet's not partnered with us but i you know i just moved to central washington now first thing i did was look for a hospital that's partnered with us and has a good program right um we got a question um is trepanion active in canada and i actually I think this is a great one, Lacey. I'm gonna let you run with it. Um, Canada and Australia, and then I didn't even I knew Canada, but the Australia thing when we added it into the ad, I'm like, wait, what? Australia? Uh, talk to us, Lacey. Yep, uh, the Australia is out there, and I'm glad you asked about Canada. I actually only work uh, with our Canada partners, so it's, I'm I'm specific to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that question, I was like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so, yes, and it, it works the same um, throughout Canada. Uh, Trupanion is actually, I, think, I believe, started in Canada. The headquarters in Canada. is in the, the yeah. U.S. now, um, but it's, uh, yes, definitely throughout Canada. And, you know, in regards to the type of treatment, Laura, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. Um, there are some of the, there's some phenomenal clinics um, throughout Canada specifically too for uh, like rehabilitative um, care, mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. some huge advancements. It's not cheap, but insurance covers that. Um, so and that's also a, a fun thing too. It's, uh, you know, I take my dog back and forth between the US and Canada. My coverage will work uh, if I take him to Canada and I live in the US or or vice versa. So the coverage works on uh, throughout North America, <laughs> including Puerto That's Rico. Right. <laughs> That's nice because there's a lot of people that show dogs either in from Canada to the U S or, or vice versa. So if your dog has a, an issue while you're at an event, it works where I'm not even sure my medical insurance works in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Trying not to cough up a lung here. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Listener land. What other questions do we have? Natalie, can you drop any other questions we've got? I'm not looking at the Facebook page, so I'm counting on. Okay. Susan, I can't read it. Susan says she is a Trepanion breeder and the dogs at her house are insured. Oh, thanks, Natalie. <laughs> blind, blind person here. Recently got a 35% increase on one of my dogs, not all just one. I've never made a claim. The explanation of expenses are rising feels inadequate because the coverage only was increased this dramatically with one dog. Go guys. Who wants to take that one? 
Uh, first of all, if you love us, the oh, go ahead, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. You, you talked first. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, with with the rates. Um, so this is something that, you know, to be completely honest, it is something that we have seen. It happens from time to time. It goes back to um, what we had touched on earlier of, you know, how do insurance companies pay for these bills when they come up? Um, so the reason that you may be seeing some increases, and I would definitely encourage you to reach out to our contact center too. They can usually provide a little more context uh, based on your specific area or your specific policy. Um, but one of the reasons that you will tend to see um, rate adjustments or increases, uh, the big thing is the cost of vet care. And that is something for good reason, hear me out, uh, but that is something that you do see go up. As I mentioned, there's a lot of these great clinics coming out that are doing a lot of research. It is expensive, you know, for some of the treatments. You don't have to be going for one of those expensive treatments, but as, as a company or as a whole, we have to look at the big picture of a, how much does it cost to insure a pet? How much could a pet cost? You know, what sorts of treatments are available out there? Um, so yes, unfortunately you do see that rates will go up along with the cost of vet care. Um, we do check our rates um, throughout the year and continue to check them. Um, so if there's ever a way for us to reduce rates, you know, maybe we overestimated how much we thought a pet would cost and it's, eh, they're actually not costing us as much. We are able mm -hmm. to reduce rates on occasion, but to be honest, it doesn't happen as often. I have had one have a rate reduction. It wasn't very oh, yeah. much. It was like $3 a month or something, but you know, whatever, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll, I think we'll try to correct it if it's, if it's yeah. off or if you have been overcharging, right. we will try to correct it. I know it's not fun to see the rate rate increases. Um, the rates are still going to be based on your pet's age of enrollment though, which does help. Um, but again, mm -hmm. I would encourage you to, you know, reach out to the contact center to ask specifically, hey, my mm -hmm. rates, what the heck, you know, what's going on? They can provide a little mm -hmm. more insight. Um, just the general kind of concept, though, is us trying to make sure that we can continue to cover 90% no cap or just no caps on your coverage. And Jordan, talk a little bit, because I think this is interesting, too. Coverage price is based on your location. So what is the cost of veterinary care in Eastern Washington versus what was it when you were by Seattle? So talk a little bit about that. Yep, exactly right. Like Lacey kind of touched on, it's, it's, it's based on your area. So I did actually get to have a slight decrease myself um, because I was living just on the edge of Seattle where, you know, vet, 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 vets are pretty expensive over there versus I moved <clears throat> into central Washington where it's, much cheaper. So I think my cat dropped three or four dollars, Rex dropped two dollars, something like that. But it was really great to see just because, you know, it is a little cheaper over here. We don't have as many options for, you know, specialty care. If I'm looking for the specialty care, I am probably going to have to make a drive. Um, the nice thing is with, with True Panion is we based, uh, we based premiums off age and enrollment, um, what breed they are, their geographical location. So for me, it's a zip code postal code for Canada, um, and then what deductible I choose. Th those are the main factors. Oh, and then male and female. Um, those are the factors that go into the pricing. Um, so luckily, I'm in a pretty pretty low low category there. But since I did move a little bit outside of the city, it's been much cheaper. OK, um, here's a great question from Carolyn. Lacey, you want to take this one? Does coverage, is it less expensive for mixed breed dogs as opposed to purebred dogs? Not necessarily. Um, it'll depend on, you know, what, what we're expecting. And that's part of why uh, we do look at rates based on a geographic uh, look geographic basis um, to see, you know, what what can we anticipate? Um, a lot of just insurance premiums are based on, you know, what we're expecting. We're trying to plan for something we don't know is, if it's going to happen yet. Um, so it would not necessarily be cheaper one way or the other. Um, and that's also the same reason that you won't see the rates are the rates are different uh, between breeds. So different breeds are going to cost more or less. Same thing with a cat versus a dog. Um, and a lot of us, I think, can you know relate to as well in either having different breeds or it's, I've had a cat in the past. It's, you know, that, that guy, man, it's, he did have, he probably had 20 lives, <laughs> but it's, 
one that was back in the day too where it's one time he had a limp and the vet just said oh see if he can walk it off and even try to treat him but you know you'll you'll see different different types of rates between breeds um whether it's mixed breed or a purebred or different types of mixed and or purebred um as well as the species uh, it's all these kind of different things go in there we do try to base our rates though too on what we're expecting from the average of that group so it's when we're looking at, you know, how do we price a mixed breed or a medium sized mixed breed? You know, we'll look mm -hmm. at the large pile of medium mixed breeds that we have seen over, you know, the last 10 years. What types mm -hmm. of claims have they run into? What are they what happens to them? So it's not necessarily going to be cheaper one side or the other. Um, it's always, always best to look into it, you know, check, check with your own area, what breed you're looking into. And there's no harm either. And, you know, just checking out if you want to see how it compares, maybe you have uh, boxers, you want to check, okay, what would it cost? Um, you know, a few different things that you can compare either by calling in or going online with Trupanion or other companies, but check what would it cost me to insure a one-year-old boxer versus a five-year-old boxer versus a one-year-old mixed breed? Eight-year-old boxer. <laughs> <laughs> whatever gonna, whatever breed sorry, you want. I'm going to continue compare. to push people insure your puppy the minute it goes home. I'm going to push that because I think it makes any, I know for a fact it makes an enormous difference. Um, okay, so Sherry, this is um, flea tick probiotics heartworm. These are in the wellness category that we were talking about a little bit earlier, right? Am I right, Lacey? Um, yep. Jordan, when you guys want to take this and run with it? Yeah, I can. I mean, so yeah, we classify that as a wellness um, category. So at True Panion, we cover accident and illness, unexpected stuff versus Rex here. I know I'm going to have to pick up his flea and tick, which actually I'm due for, I believe this month. Uh, so I'm going to have to go pick that up. I'm, you know, I'm going to have to. You're in central uh, Washington. He needs heartworm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's due for that. that here too, but, but that's all expected costs. I can plan for that. I can budget for it. Um, so True Panion is not going to cover wellness items. There are some wellness plans out there that can cover these kind of things, but definitely look into the details to make sure it's worth it. Um, that's my only advice. Right. And, and I think that the important distinction that we were making earlier for, for that last question, insurance and what it is and what it isn't. And in most cases it is, it's accident and illness, not wellness. And right. um, if you want a wellness plan, look for a wellness plan with the understanding that it might not be as good in some of the other categories. Is that a good way to say that? Okay. Natalie wants to know. <laughs> she wants I to know if I there's that question. for her goats. <laughs> Sadly, no, but that's not the first time I've been asked that. I, I have go goats. My... I want to know about I... the goat insurance policy. <laughs> I got to go I visit mean, one of my breeders in South Carolina and they're like, we love you guys. Everything's great. But if you could just cover my goat here, I would be a goats. bigger fan. And the goat's name was Oreo. Oh, right. Very sweetheart. But um, no, we do not cover <laughs> goats or horses. I, I'm not sure if there's any companies out there that cover goats, but uh, you'd have to dive into it. Or guinea goats. pigs, bunnies. There's, yeah, we, we've gotten a lot of questions. <laughs> Sherry, you're no, no problem at all. That's just, I mean, that's basically, you know, that's a pretty common question and it's a good question. And it's just a question of, you know, what is it the insurance is going to cover and it, the wellness plans, my understanding, the wellness plans are not as deep in some of the accident insurance or accident and illness coverage. Is that a fair statement, you guys? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the insurance agent and I don't play one on TV. <laughs> a lot of the wellness coverage Sorry, I see, you. you may break even kind of thing on them. <laughs> so you really just got to look at like what's covered. They have, they have really good things that'll, you know, an exam fee might be covered or like your first set of vaccines or something like that. But it, it's, look at it over time and just see if it's, you know, we do like to say at Drew Panion at least that it pairs really well together with the accident illness coverage. That way, if anything does come up, I mean, you are covered. Um, if you're able to do right. both of those, it's a really great option for coverage. Okay. Kay then, Caldwell, here's our favorite question. Multi-dog policies. I've been, y'all, just so you know, I've been banging this drum <laughs> for like five long years. <laughs> 
Yes. Speak to it, people. Go, Lacey, go. <laughs> I was going to say, Laura, I, I think I've actually heard you give some great talks on this and I've taken notes on. <laughs> um, but short answer is no. Uh, it's we don't have uh, like multi-pet discounts. Um, it's we, we don't have the ability to um, discount our rates. Um, it is going to be based on the individual pets, um, which does go back to just the general value of it, though, too, and making sure that we can cover all pets the same amount without a cap. Um, so we want to make sure that they are covered if if something were to happen um, but we do plan it all as a an individual pet um, so it's you wouldn't wouldn't find multi-pet discounts um, but there are some options definitely items that you can look into um, that I've talked to with some of our other breeder partners especially a lot of our breeders you know it's uh, it's almost rare for them to just have one or two pets um, <laughs> like Jordan and I do I you know just having that. a, 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 a uh, so it's when you're looking at ensuring, you know, 20 of your breeding females where it's like, how how do I do this? What do I do? Um, so there are some options uh, that you can look into that, you know, might might work one way or the other. Um, the uh, higher deductibles, that's one option, um, you know, a way to kind of reduce your cost. It's not something I would normally recommend um, uh, for myself, especially with my own dog. I like having him at a low or no deductible so that I can run in and just take care of him and I can afford the monthly rates. But when we're looking at the overall cost um, and also with, you know, families that have, you know, a lot of dogs that you're taking very close, close care of, higher deductible is not a terrible option because you know what to watch out for your dog. They're not going to run into the same issues as the average pet. Um, but, oh, I won't ramble on too much. Quick answer. Is, no, I think, we, I think that's there's actually not really good, Lacey. And I think, you know, for me personally, right, when I first started being involved with True Panion and learning about True Panion, learning about pet insurance, like, again, this was from Mars as far as I was concerned. I'm like, what do you mean pet insurance? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and I had adult dogs. And they're like, well, it's going to cost this much to insure them. And I'm like, yeah, hell no. <laughs> like I've got, you know, six adult dogs. No, I, I, I can't do that. And so what I have found myself doing, and it's also, I think it's important to remember, you know, you guys understand because you do this enough, but for us to look at our house full of dogs and say, you're the only one worth insuring. Like, we can't do that. That's like saying to our kids, you're the only one I care about. Like, it's not a thing you can do. And so the way that I have managed it for myself is I have insured the ones, my keeper puppies, right? Like I've enrolled them at eight weeks and I've kept them on it. And <clears throat> I have high deductibles on them so that I can pay for the old dogs that I couldn't afford to insure. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> I was more talking than I should be doing. Um. Anyway, so that is that. That's how I manage it for everybody out there in listener land. Um. I keep a high deductible on the ones that I've insured since puppyhood. That makes it so I can afford to pay the bills on the older dogs that I can't afford to insure at five or six or whatever. Yep. So. That's my solution. I don't know, Jordan. You got any other bright ideas? Uh, no, I do something simpler. Similar. I mean, I've got two German wire hairs, and I've got my cat who's in the back here. Uh, the cat's on the highest deductible. He doesn't leave the house. I don't expect much to happen, but I like the the option for coverage if something happens. The wire hairs who are out running in the fields might step in a coyote hole. I keep them at a little bit lower of a deductible. And I would yeah. say, I mean, the the the. Uh, monthly premiums can be a scary thought when it comes to your animals, but once I got my first claim paid, I was like, yep, never getting rid of it. Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> getting it on the new puppy as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's definitely something to test out, try out, and, and you know, it, it can definitely um, work at the end of the day. And ask questions, right? Like everybody needs to do their due diligence, do their research, you know, we all, the three of us happen to agree that True Panion is amazing, but it's not necessarily the every single person. That's okay. But yeah. know the questions to ask 
and know that you're getting the right insurance for your pet so that you can take the best care of them possible. That's my basic pitch. Do you, either of you have a a closing argument that you would like to add? (laughs) No, that was, that was really well said. I'm I'm sure I can speak for Lacey that like, even we, even though we, I've been with Trebani now for almost five years, Lacey longer, but we still keep an eye on the other insurances, see what's changing out there. See, see who's trying to do more, who's, you know, policy starting to fall apart. Um, so definitely ask the questions, look at the details um, and pick things apart because it might appear great off the bat, but look what it's going to be for when your dog hits five years old, 10 years old. Um, that's all I got. Yeah, yeah the for sure. Pricing. Yeah. And it's, it's common for, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this happens, happens to you too, Jordan, but it's friends and family asking, well, what do you know about this one? Or what do you know about this one? And it's, you know, not too long ago, a friend brought up a, a company I had never heard of. And I was like, man, I owe you a, Oh, you a beer. It's a, <laughs> that I knew all the companies. I've read all the policies. No, I'm just kidding. I've read all the policies. But he, he found a company that I had never heard of before. And it's like, you know, this is interesting. Let's see what they have. Um, and that's one thing that I would encourage to, you know, in the process of, you know, doing some research. Oh, look at how old the companies are, too. So it's mm-hmm. he had this friend had founded a company that had a lower rate. It looked like similar coverage. And it's like, ah, but what are what are the loopholes? You know, what's what's mm-hmm. going on? You know, what's their history? So that's another mm-hmm. thing that you can run into, too. There's a lot of companies that are are popping up with new pet insurance or what is this? Um, and Trupanion has a good history. You know, it's, we have a lot, <laughs> a lot of information that we can stand on and we're reliable and it's been 20 plus years. Um, but that doesn't mean a newer company isn't going to be just as reliable 20 years down the road too. So it's, you know, it's worth comparing and just looking at what those options are. I would encourage any of my closest friends and family too, that, you know, if you don't want to go with Trupanion, here's the reasons that I like this company. If you're going with someone else, maybe check out these things that I think Trupanion is good at or uh, vice versa. If you find something another company does great, you know, it's what is Trupanion offering in that front? Um, you know, just just compare your options more than anything we want people to have information be informed about what else is out there and i would rather anybody have some insurance than nothing at all and have to run into that situation of putting a pet down because they can't cover it so it's you know it's do your research there's some great options out there um and it's yeah obviously we stand behind trupanion but i think that there's some some good options and with research um, your veterinarian can also be a great one to ask too. You know, what's your opinion on this? Yeah. How have you seen this work? Every veterinarian I've ever talked to, I'm not, this is no joke. Every single vet I've ever asked says Trupanion. So, I mean, that's, I don't, you know, I'm not being weird. I'm just saying I have a lot of veterinarian friends and they all say Trupanion is their favorite. So, and I think that's because Trupanion pays them, right? Like the, the, then the veterinarian doesn't have to worry. Right. So that's from that perspective, an additional benefit. So anyway. All right. Well, you guys, I am sorry. I am fading fast. Anybody has additional questions, feel free, drop them in the, I know everybody will watch this down the road. Um, We get a lot of views that can't come in at five o'clock in the afternoon, Pacific time. So everybody that's watching this down the road, if you have a question, drop it in there. I will see it and I will make sure that Lacey is working for if I can. How's that for a deal? Excellent. All right. Well, I apologize for my um, rather stuffy uh, <coughs> hacking up along um, <laughs> live experience this evening. But I'm really glad that you guys got to join us. And thank you, everyone, who stopped in from listener land. And again, um, no matter what, do your research, read the fine print, and get your dog some pet insurance. Or your cat. You know, there's cats out there. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks so much. We really appreciate you. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Oh, quick programming note for listener land. Next live at five will not be happening in March because the first day in March, I will be in Scotland on the way to Crufts. And I'm not going to be able 
to come to you live from Scotland. And I'm really sad about that. But I'm not sad that I'm going to Scotland. So, <laughs> so I will see everyone in Lister land the first Tuesday in April. Peace out, yo.